If you travel through the countryside to the southwest of Guangzhou, the architecture might really take you by surprise. That is because a lot of it was built by overseas Chinese, people who left China starting in the early 1800s and then came back home. People like my own father, whose family they spent generations in this part of China. This is actually a homecoming for me. This is a family a get gathering, family gathering. I haven't, you know, I have not met and seen any of my relatives ever since I was born, and I'm so excited to be coming back home. You see this? Oh, this is family tree. This is my, this is my father, and this is my grandfather. This is my great grandfather, and they are. This is actually the 26th generation of the Yans. And this is the Yan's Ancestry Hall. Not too far away is a place where the overseas Chinese builders really make their mark when they came back home. This is the town of Chekham, the western part of Kaiping. And most of these buildings were built around the 20s. And some of these structures, you notice that it's got stained glass, very uniquely western style architecture and design. During the 1800s and 1900, many of the Chinese around here, including my father and my grandfather, they went overseas all over the world. They work hard, they build railroad, and they do all kinds of things and make enough money. And they came back, and this is what they built. I'm standing on top of this Delo, the fortified tower. You notice that the architectural design varies depending on where the overseas Chinese came back from. It can be India, North America, Australia, or even South America. That's the reason why you see unique architectural design. These towers are unique to this part of China. Each one is a blending of East and West, and also a form and function. Both a beautiful place to live and a fortified defense tower to protect against bandits. Here I'm in a turret. And these are the gun slits, one, two, and three. They got a hole here, you can even throw stone and shoot out from the hole down there. Look at that. You know, people live here like a self-contained community. You got chicken, hogs, fish farm, rice fields, everything. They don't have to go anywhere. Delo is normally built around all these farms. You have duck farm, lotus ponds, fish farms, and rice fields. So this is a self-sufficient, self-contained farming community. This is the workhorse of our house. Oh, been around for 75 years. You know what? I am the original Chinese cowboy. Oh, farming is hard work in China. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Follow them. In the entrance of every single building or household in many parts of China, you see sign and design graphic to wish the household peace, prosperity, and good fortune. You know, people in this Delo, this fortified tower, still living here. Oh, they cook here and deliver it. It's beautiful, nice and cool. Now, look at that. These are from the rice field, dry up rice straw. You don't want to waste it, you see? You use it as fuel. I'm making winter melon soup. And my cousin is doing rice. The rice is from right outside the rice field too. And it's gonna be beautiful. And you're invited for lunch. Ah, look at this. This is what you call back to nature. Use everything from nature. I haven't done this for a while, so my cousin, Mei Yun, is coaching me and make sure I've got the maximum fire and maximum heat to do stir fry and make soups. The overseas Chinese created these architectural marvels in the countryside near Guangzhou. Just like them, I have traveled far away and made a new life in the West. But when I see all these amazing buildings built by the hands of my own ancestors, I know in my heart that I have come home. <laughs>